All right. Welcome to the conversation today as part of the This Working Dad Cares campaign on being an adventurous dad. Today we have Steve Limig and Nate Jenkins with us, as well as Scott Liebman um, as an active participant in our conversation today. Um, we're talking about bringing adventure in the outdoors into our parenting and what that looks like for us. Um, we can go a lot of different angles. We have a dad here who's written a book on camping and I know takes their children or child out on big adventures um, in the Colorado Front Range and beyond. And I've got uh, Nate here who's in Brooklyn, New York and is finding um, nature in the cracks and crevices in, in Brooklyn, New York, which is actually, a, you know, I'm sure a uh, interesting and fun um, adventure in and of itself. Um, so uh, to kick it off, I'd like to introduce our guests for today. Um, and Steve, maybe you could tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. Happy to. So, um, yep, Steve Lemig. Uh, I am the founder of Wilderdad.com, uh, which is a uh, dad blog that I started, uh, gosh, about five years ago. And, uh, and I just, I feature tons of content and stories about uh, dads, about fatherhood and, uh, and, you know, and how to get your kids into the outdoors. Um, and then, uh, and then just last year, I wrote a book uh, called Camping Anatomy, Activities for Kids. And, um, and it's a great little book. I'm super proud of it. It's, it's the first book that I've written. Uh, so it was, it was a really fun project to work on. And uh, basically it's, I, I've written it for kids aged eight to 12 in that range. Uh, and it's full of uh, about 20 lessons uh, and 20 activities that families can do together, um, either in your backyard or, uh, or actually on, you know, on real, uh, real outdoor camping trips. Uh, so anyway, that's, um, that's uh that's me in a nutshell um to to start with well can you also tell us maybe the age of your child and one thing that you do that uh inspires both of you yeah sure um so i have i have one kid um 12 years old and um you know i started I started taking him into the outdoors from a super early age. Um, his relationship with the outdoors uh, has definitely evolved over time. And, you know, sometimes he's super into it. He loves going camping, you know, on, on some weekends, but other weekends, just like any other kid, you know, he, he wants to just hang out on the couch and play video games. So it's, it's always that little bit of give and take. Um, but overall, you know, I think introducing uh, my kid to the outdoors at a young age really, um, really established that connection with the outdoors uh, for him. And so, you know, I'd say one of the things the, the first thing that comes to mind that we absolutely love to do together that, um, you know, no question when I when I bring it up he is you know he's game for it is is fishing um and and again that was something that i started uh with him pretty pretty early on you know just with like a simple um simple fly fishing rod and uh you know and we were constantly tangling the line and you know and like half the time was spent uh <laughs> untangling the, the line and um but it's you know it's just uh it, it's one of those one of those activities that we both just totally love and you know and we can be quiet we can chat on the you know on the edge of the pond or on the on the creek uh creek bed and um and yeah it's just i i think it's interesting that that's that's the that's one of the activities that he just absolutely loves like anytime I bring it up he's just like yes let's do it let's let's get out awesome Nate you want to tell us a little bit about yourself I know I saw the fishing uh popped up as an exciting connection so I'm curious to hear how that is yeah no uh I yeah but I, I love fishing um I'm from Orlando Florida originally and I now live in Brooklyn New York with my wife and my my five-year-old son 
Uh, I work for a company called Sidewalk Labs, which is a, a technology company that's a part of a, a part of Google. All that to say is it, it fuels my opportunities to, to do stuff outside and spend time with my family. Um, uh, I, I think I need to read your uh, read your book, Steve. Uh, I, I, I welcome <laughs> those activities. Uh, my kids almost six, and so it sounds like he's he's, he's going to be in the age range pretty soon, and we try to flex up a little bit. So, you know, I'll uh, I'll send you a copy. Yeah. I need a copy of that, man. Um, you know, we love the outside. I'll tell you guys the, the I am from Florida. Spent a lot of time outside as a kid, like playing sports and doing stuff with my dad. Um, and the pandemic hit, we were trying to find more ways to be outside like everybody. And I took my son fishing for the first time. He's probably like three. So a little bit young. And so all the line twists and, you know, attentions. So he played with he played with the fishing lures, the little plastic worms more than he did the fishing. But if we ever found a spot that had some of the fish, he was very happy to pull them out of the water. The thing that we've you know, really found a lot of passion in more, more recently was, you know, we were, I'm, I'm from the South, my wife's from the South. I didn't see snow until I was in college, um, but we went skiing for the first time in February. So like a little bit late, but um, I had been skiing like twice my whole life before then. But I, I, I said, I, you know, if we're gonna live in the Northeast, we probably should learn how to do that. And so we went and figured out how to like go and go skiing a couple hours away from New York City. And my son loves it, like absolutely loves it. And it's become a thing that like has been, you know, something that we look forward to even, you know, you know, this winter coming up. Uh, he learned how to do it very fast. I guess kids learn, learn stuff fast. He loves being outside. I love being outside. And so it's a little bit athletic and a, a lot outdoors. And that's been something that he and I have been really enjoying for the last, you know, at least this season. Um, and I look forward to doing that with him for like years and years to come. We fish in the summer, in the spring, in the fall. We go skiing in the winter. It's going to be our, our routine. <laughs> yeah, you go with the season. It's nice to be in that flow for sure. Um, when I realized I didn't introduce myself much, my name is Paul Humes. I live uh, in Boulder, Colorado. Um, and we're also, you know, follow the seasons. I have two kids and one on the way. Um, and, you know, I actually do outdoor education for a living. I manage a summer camp and um, work for an outdoor education not for profit that you know works to get out get kids outside and reduce barriers um, to getting children outside and so it's a passion of mine ironically um, because I'm pretty good at excel and pretty good at using the computer I find myself on the computer more than I find myself outside a lot of the days and so um, at times it has to be intentional for me um, and so the way it looks for us is you know my daughter she goes to nature preschool we have a preschool at the, the school that I work at and so she gets to spend a lot of her day at the creek um, but as a family it's mostly you know it might be sitting on the patio um, digging in digging in the dirt um, it might be taking a trip up to the mountains for a hike or just going to the park and sitting by the river so although I live right on the front range with access to skiing and camping basically at my back door uh, the reality of my life is we get to do that uh, on occasion so we kind of find things a little bit closer to home which is mm -hmm. fine you know actually the big grandiose events that you see on instagram aren't always uh the ways that are you know realistic for families to get outside and so um, i'm gonna you know try to pull the conversation back that direction to practical ways that families can bring adventure outside and let's, you know, even defining what adventure is because I was, you know, working on our garden bed um, yesterday or this weekend and, you know, moving big flagstones around. And every time I pulled up a stone, there was a roly poly or some kind of slug. And to my daughter, I could tell that was an enormous, as, as enormous as, you know, coming up over the crest and seeing an incredible view of mountains. So um, I think, we, you know, defining what that means for us in our lives is where we can start. And so, I want to throw it out to everyone here on the call in curiosity is what does adventure currently mean to your family? You know, I've heard skiing and fishing, um, but you know, what's the, what's the reality for you? Do you know, is your forerunner, uh, you know, do you have the camper top and the forerunner ready to go and you're cruising back country every single weekend, or is it something a little more mild? Yeah. I mean, I, I think a good place to start, like you're saying, is what, what really is that definition of adventure and, and even parallel to that, uh, what's your definition of, of nature, uh, and, and the outdoors. Um, and I think, you know, I, I think it is important for us, uh, to expand that definition of, of nature to include, 
you know, your your suburban neighborhoods or your downtown parks. And um, it's it really isn't just those wide open spaces. Um, you know, I, I, I think about it like, <laughs> you know, the, the whole planet Earth is nature. <laughs> the whole thing is nature. And, uh, you know, even though we live in uh, most of us live in cities, you know, even even the city is nature too. It's just got a little extra concrete, and you know, and some manicured uh, trees and and plants. But you know, th there are still so many opportunities for for learning about nature, and you know, learning about how the outdoors works by just walking on on your sidewalk. You know, like you mentioned, Paul you know you you'll you'll find bugs on the sidewalk or in your backyard you know that you can you can learn about um you know even just seeing even just seeing a, a trail of ants on a on a sidewalk you know provides an opportunity for learning about nature so yeah absolutely a lot of times what we try to train in with our kids is awareness as opposed to getting yourself to some place it's more about being aware of where you are and spotting the the hawk that flies over you know even downtown there's going to be birds that are out soaring um what type of birds are there what are they doing have you seen their patterns if you go to the same location every day what are you noticing every season every day what time the time of day um and so it's less about all right you need to you know you need to pack this in a sleeping bag and you need to know how to start a fire and you know you got to have your bear spray it's more of like no you live you live where you live and there is nature around you here are the ways that we can find it nate how about yourself you know being in brooklyn i'm super interested in your perspective on this you're uh you're muted right now i was saying i love what both of you were saying and, and paul to your point about you know there are the big grand things that you can do and then there's things that you can do every day we live in Brooklyn. There's a whole lot of concrete around here, and you wouldn't think necessarily there's a whole lot of nature here, but there's tons. We've got red tail hawks, we've got peregrine falcons, we've got kestrels. If anybody is into like birding, I grew up like loving birds. There's probably a bird book behind me. Yep, <laughs> there is right here. Um, and this stuff is like you get it from the library, you get it from lots of places. And my son, you know, the kids when they're when they're growing up, they love animals, and my son loves to watch wild crats on television and he gets into that kind of stuff and he can tell you in any animal fact and the truth is we found some really awesome stuff in the parks here in in, in new york city um my wife doesn't like this story but uh last season we had a pet praying mantis um <laughs> that we literally kept caught and you can learn anything you want to on youtube these days and we had a a, a, a pet praying mantis it's the biggest it's the biggest uh, animal that we could keep in our, our tiny apartment um, but we had a pet praying mantis that we were finding food for in the park and we would go out and catch it with jars and we were feeding it every few days and it lasted for like a couple of months and it yeah. was pretty awesome. And my son got really excited about um, not just like keeping this little pet alive in a jar and he did a great job of that. But the most fun part was we got us a chance to go outside and like forage through different plants looking for things to feed it. Yeah, which was like a really great experience for him. And so it got us into the parks here in a very like, you know, um, way where it was very purposeful. We got to know the, the, the park ranger his name's Paolo, and he, who loves spending time with, with kids and families talking about like what he does every day. And so to the, to the point you were making about, you know, there's, there's lots of things you can do outside and it doesn't have to be expensive or hard. It's just getting outside and committing to like what's around you that's been a saving grace for us when um, when a lot of the social stuff is harder to do. It's been a good, a good opportunity for us to get outside and just kind of figure out what's in our, our neighborhood. And that's just right across, you know, a few blocks away. And he's enjoyed that. He's learned from that. It's given him a sense of like comfort and um, lets him become an expert on nature in ways where mm -hmm. it's just, it's a great opportunity for kids. And I think he'll remember that all his life. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah, um, you know, I I heard a um, I was on a on a dad talk a few months ago, and and um, and and one of the dads mentioned that the the way that that he gets his kids into the outdoors outdoors is uh, 
is is using the uh, the app uh, Pokemon Go, mm. and so <laughs> I thought that was so interesting that uh, you know that uh, he used that as a tool for getting his kids outside of the house and you know walking down the street and you know getting some steps in and you know and going down to local parks and and stuff like that and I was just like that's it's brilliant you know it's the and again, I, I think it's just another great example of, of how um, you can just expand that that definition of outdoor adventure um, to to be really, really inclusive. Absolutely. Well, and there's a there's kind of a theme that we've hit on that's mentorship, right? We are taking mm. our kids to this, or we are providing them this experience, or or we have made it important. Certainly the kids you know, the praying mantis may have been found by your son or you, you know, it's, there's a collaborative effect, but you know, there's something here that's brought us to this table that says there's something important here. And I want to start at the roots of that. Um, for as a summer camp director or program director, oftentimes I'll stand with a parent kind of off back from the group when they're at pickup and we'll stand with our hands in our pockets and kind of chatting as they play in the Creek. And 99% of the time, if I sit there long enough, the parent says, yeah, when I was a kid, this is just what I did all the time. Or, mm -hmm. you know, when I was a kid, we used to do this. And so I, this has come up over and over again. And I, and what I'm realizing is a memory of our own childhood and what was important to us is key to unlocking that for our own children. Now our children will, um, will, will find their own memories, right? They will find their own interests, but the, 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 realizing the importance of those autonomous moments where they're out exploring or they're, they're getting to lead their own adventure are huge. And so my question to you and even Scott here, um, when was it, when was a moment that you felt as a child that you were where you should be, right? Like, was there a place that was really important to you? Was there a mentor that you had that, that brought you here um, that gave you a sense of maybe uh, freedom or a sense of confidence or a sense of adventure where maybe the tree that you, you know, maybe there's a tree that you've been back to from your childhood that was like, that tree was only that big, but when you were a kid, <laughs> man, that was massive, right? So do you have a memory like that that's, um, that sticks with you? Yeah, uh, um, so for me, I, I grew up in Connecticut and, uh, and I was, uh it was at a time when when real estate wasn't <laughs> wasn't too expensive so my my family was able to afford a, a place right on the coast um in in eastern connecticut and and it was just it was a little cottage you know nothing fancy um and uh and you know and, and my parents were not into the outdoors they didn't they didn't camp you know we didn't we went skiing a couple of times when I was a kid, um, and that was that was about it. So, uh, so my interest in the outdoors was definitely all it was all mine. It wasn't it wasn't necessarily encouraged, you know, by uh, or nurtured by by my parents. So, but being at the you know living at the coast. Um, and in a pretty quiet uh, uh, neighborhood area, um, there just was tons of open space. And so I, I would, you know, I could walk a hundred yards and get to the beach. And uh, there were a couple of docks uh, nearby that I could fish off of. Um, and then I had a friend who had this small aluminum boat that had a hole in it that we we'd take out in the, in the water and we'd constantly have to bail water out of it. Um, but we would take it out to fish and uh, we saved up one summer to get lobster, uh, a couple of lobster pots, you know, so we would check those, um, you know, every few days. But, um, but I don't know, the, the, for me, there, there was one, one memory that I've got where my friend and I wanted to see how far we could row our boat along the coast <laughs> and see if we could get to this cove that was, uh, I don't know, it was, it was close to a mile away. And, you know, and here I was like eight years old, he was 10. Um, 
uh, you know, it blows me away to think that our that our parents allowed us to, you know, to do that um, <laughs> at such a young age. But you know, we we did we made it to the to the cove, and um, and we ended up fishing in the cove for a little while. And then when uh, we decided to leave, um, we started rowing out of the cove, and and it had kind of a kind of a narrow inlet to it, so. Um, we were struggling, like, you know, I, I started rowing first and, and I just remember struggling to get out of that cove and we could not figure out what was happening. And then we realized that the tide was coming in. So, so we were working against the, the current and, uh, and man, I mean, it just, it took us like an extra hour to, to finally get out of the cove. And you know we're exhausted. We ended up having to drag the boat like along the edge of the of the beach to get past the inlet, and then we still had another mile to row back home. And so it just was like this epic, epic adventure, you know. And and I think you know just what it taught me was that you know we didn't panic, we didn't lose our heads, um, we worked together. Uh, we, you know, we both took turns rowing and, um, and we just, we just helped each other through that, through that ordeal. Now, when we, when we got home, we got in major trouble and we got ground, both of us got grounded for like a month after that. And <laughs> we had beach cleanup duty for, for the rest of the summer. And, and, and but even that, you know, was there, there was a lesson there that there are consequences for not planning <laughs> and, you know, not, um, yeah, not, not planning out your, your adventure. But that one, that one sticks to me as, as like, as just, it was fun. It was a fun adventure, but it was, you know, there, there was definitely some high risk there. And, you know, and I think, I think both my friend and I learned learned a lot from that yeah I have I have one too I um was thinking about how you know my childhood days fishing my uncle Horace who lived in Jacksonville at the time taught me how to fish my dad didn't know much about fishing but started getting into it because I liked it um and he lived in Jacksonville on the river and we would when we got a chance to go up there he had a, a his son was about the same age as me so my, my cousin and he and I were probably like late elementary school, middle school. And that's where I learned how to like get a regular little fishing pole with a little hook, some worms with a bobber, and drop it in the water and catch bluegill and sunnies and all the, all the small little fish that you can catch like a dozen of and, and not think twice about. And for me, it was like being outside. Um, you learn, you gotta learn how to like get your hands messy. You get pricked with the little hook every so often. And I, I enjoyed it and it taught me, how, it actually probably was the first time like being outside by yourself and being kind of you know, roaming around the neighborhood. And this is, I didn't live where this was and being like reliant, like self-reliant. Um, and in Florida, you gotta like watch out for snakes, gotta watch out for alligators. And so it wasn't like there was like no danger, but it was measured. And me and my cousin would walk around and fish and catch fish like all day. You wouldn't see us until like at night. And I brought that home with me back to Orlando where there's tons of lakes and my parents got comfortable enough with me, you know, going outside, you know, down the street, fishing on the lakes that were close to our house. And there was one time I actually remember, um, or I had one of those little lures that had a little trouble hook on it. So like I'd move past the sunnies and the bluegill. And I like, I, I, I vividly remember this. I had too much slack in my line. I threw it out and I caught myself in the back of the head. <laughs> Every fisherman can tell you one of these stories, or at least those fishermen who have, are honest with themselves. I caught myself in the back of the head, and I could not get the hook out because it had a barb on it. And I asked so my friend cut the cut the line, and I had to go to the hospital and get it removed. Everybody had to cut it out, um, and it didn't deter me from fishing. And what it taught me was like, you know, what if there's passion? If you have a passion for something, if you enjoy it, you got to be careful. You got to be um, thoughtful about it. And it doesn't mean that there's no nothing bad is going to happen, but it it teaches you how to be tough. Um, and that's one of the vivid memories I've, I have of like being outdoors and uh, just having a fondness for being outside that I'll, I'll never forget. And also, 
you, it helps you grow up. Yeah, absolutely. Scott, you want, do you have a story from childhood that you can recall or a place? Um, yeah, I mean, I, so I, I kind of grew up in an era where you woke up and you went outside and you didn't come back in until the street lights came on, you know, other than to eat. So a lot of neighborhood based outdoor play, capture the flag, catching lightning bugs, things like that. I would say as I as I got older, I, I kind of discovered the more adventuresome side. And I think part of that was uh, maybe a little correlation with those feelings of independence, maybe like Steve talked about. So that we had some woods behind our house that we would camp out in. And then, you know, as we could drive, we, we went a little further out. And so, um, so yeah, I kind of view the outdoors as, as a place to kind of gain peace and, and perspective and, you know, escape the, uh, the, uh, high level of hustle bustle and, you know, in the world around us. So. Absolutely. Well, and I'm, I'm curious for Steve and Nate, particularly based on, or actually Scott, since you have a 19 and 23 year old, you know, there's a high level of risk involved, you know, being out on a boat on the coast. I mean, that could end in a different story or Nate, you know, being out on the banks, down in Florida, Southern Florida, there are risks there, just even mm -hmm. being out in the neighborhood. Um, yeah, I also, you know, I feel that I had an out toward, out till dinner childhood. I'm in my mid thirties. I feel like I was, you know, rightfully so or not, I feel like I was one of the tail ends of the out toward dinner childhood um, kind of uh, eras. But um, if you can make an honest statement, if you put your kids in the same situations that you found yourselves in, like what's your comfort level with that? You know, Nate, would you let your son, you know, if you were down in Florida, go off with their fishing pole or Steve, would you put your kid on that boat um, when they were eight, 10 years old? I mean, maybe you would, but let's talk about how that actually feels in your gut when you think about it. Yeah. You know what? I, I thought about this because my son is five, almost turning six and he's 40 something pounds. So you know, would I let him sit on a lake on, you know, in, in Florida right now? Probably not because there are gators in there and you're seeing that. But like, would I let him at some point? Absolutely. Uh, and then thing about, you know, doing stuff outside, outdoors, you got to ask, like, always got to talk to your kids about like how I'm like assessing risk and danger. Um, you know, when we're catching like food for our, for our pet praying mantis, sometimes we catch bees and like, you got to be careful. And you know, barring like an allergic reaction to getting stung by a bee, you know, I, I want to teach them how to be careful. Um, when we're in Florida fishing, like we got to look on the ground for snakes. And I teach him that because that's what I'm doing when I'm out there. So I'm trying to teach him, you know, the tools of like how to be safe um, because there are some risk. And you know what, for me and our family, those risks are worth it because the reward of like having this like really, you know, great experiences as a kid, especially is something he'll never forget. And you guess what you got to do. It's, to me, it's, I don't think it's any different than like teaching a kid how to cross the street. You got to teach a kid how to cross the street. You got to teach them to look both ways. And I think enjoying the outdoors is the kind of same kind of thing. And kids have a huge propensity to like understand and to learn. And I believe in that. And that's how we talk about what we're doing when we're doing it. So that at some point in time, he can get that independence like you were saying, um, Scott. Um, so he can do stuff on his own. And I think that's really important is, is, is equipping kids uh, with the ability to do that because then they'll also take it further than what I can take it and they'll learn more than you know what I even, even what I know and I think that's really important to do. Totally. Yeah I hear that loud and clear that you know the rewards and the benefits and we'll talk a little bit about more specifically about maybe what those rewards and benefits are in a little bit but uh, you know I also feel that they outweigh the risks um, a lot of times you have to mm -hmm. weigh and measure that. Scott or Steve, yeah. would you put your kid out in the on the boat in Connecticut? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a good one. I I think at age twelve, now that my my kid is at that age, I would feel more comfortable. At age eight or nine, uh, no. <laughs> um, but you know, I think uh, the other the other part of uh, of this equation or the, that, that decision is, is what your kids are comfortable with. Um, you know, cause I, I think for, for all of us, uh, we made those decisions as kids, 
um, ourselves uh, for, for what level of risk uh, we were comfortable with. And, you know, and part of, part of childhood too is, is finding your boundaries and pushing those boundaries and learning what you are capable of. So I think, you know, I think a lot of it comes down to what your, what your, what your kid is interested in and what they uh, want to take on, what, what level of risk they want to take on. And, and then, yeah, to, to Nate's point, um, one of the best things that we can do as, as dads and parents is to give your kids those mental tools for assessing risk and, um, and then uh, adjusting your, <laughs> your strategy, uh, you know, as you're, as you're doing the activity. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Um, I mean, that's the scaffolding of the adventure is huge, right? You know, I know, you know, I have friends who don't do a lot of camping and they'll come up to me and ask me about camping. And, um, you know, I always have an answer. I'm always encouraging people to get outside. But, you know, in the back of my mind, for some folks, I'm like, I think you need to start with the hike. That's an hour long <laughs> and then go camping after you've done that four or five times. And, you know, after you've done a two hour hike and you sat and had lunch and you brought your own food, you know, then maybe think about doing a little bit more of the camping and that's backpacking or car camping, right? Because being completely immersed in nature can be overwhelming. And if you do too much too fast, um, that can be a liability too, because you can give a bad experience, especially if you as the mentor parent, mentor guardian whatever it is if you aren't ready for what it is like you can have a wonderful experience wow that was really wild and unexpected or you know you could get a flat tire at the campsite not it not you know and everything could go south from there and then all of a sudden your family is you know we're not an outdoor family you know so um, that scaffolding is really important and so you know watching your kids interests and seeing you know we're not sitting there with a notebook kid can tie shoes kid can you know, fall down a four feet and not cry you know it's not it's not that but you do assess little assessments over time um and you know so you know what are you looking for in your your children i mean what 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 specifically are your children exhibiting for you that has made you more comfortable to take them out into the woods like how do you know when it's time yeah I, yeah, it's a good, it's a good question. I, for, you know, for, for me to start with, um, you know, my, my wife and I took our, took our kid camping for the first time when he was, uh, gosh, <clears throat> less than, less than a year old. And we just did, uh, we did actually go camping. No, wait, wait, wait. We, we actually did camp um, in, in uh, the back of our car in the driveway. Uh, of our house a couple of times just to get used to <laughs> that that experience and um, so we we did that a handful of times and then uh, and then we actually went went tent camping and we brought you know the kitchen sink with us um, toys and I mean there we had a we had a playpen and I mean it was like it was, <laughs> it was full on car camping. Um, but, you know, we, we did that for, for years. And, and so, um, you know, I, I guess, so what I'm getting to is that like my, my wife and I are avid backpackers and we really were excited to introduce our kid to, to backpacking. And we waited until he was about 10, um, and and we just did a, a you know an overnight backpacking trip for the first time and um and he just absolutely hated it <laughs> like you know you know because we we made him carry a pack and you know we had a sleeping bag in there and some water and snacks and and all that stuff and he just hated carrying his stuff or that much stuff and uh and so you know, we, we tried it a couple more times and he just did not take to it at all. He just did not like the experience uh, at all. And so that was just, an, you know, it's an example of, of where, you know, my wife and I were sort of pushing our kid to do something that we loved 
and after a couple of tries, I think we, we did it three times, um, he still just didn't like it. And so, you know, we just, we took it off the table. And, and so he, he's good with car camping. He likes being supported by, you know, all those, all those comforts, um, you know, but backpacking is just not something that, that he wants to do. And, and that's, you know, I, for me, that's an example of listening to your kid and, you know, introducing them to, uh, to things that you love, activities that, that you love as, uh, in your own life, but recognizing when, when your kid <laughs> truly doesn't, yeah. you know, doesn't connect with it. Yeah, I agree with that. And I only have a five-year-old. Um, uh, the times I took him fishing when he was three or four, again, when he was playing with the worms and not really doing the fishing, were very different than two weeks ago when we went fishing and he was putting his own worms on. And that's, I think that's a little bit of that's age, but it didn't, he didn't have to like it. And he did. And I got lucky because now I got a fishing, mm -hmm. par a fishing partner. Um, we haven't gotten into camping yet, but I, we did go camping uh, a friend at a friend of ours house who has a big enough yard uh, last, last fall. Uh, and he loved that. And I would like to get, you know, work art to the point you were making Paul about the scaffolding. I didn't, I didn't grow up camping. So I, I'm, I'm Googling, you know, what, what do you need for car camping like everybody else? And so I got a handful of things, a tent, and we, we did it in the, in, in the backyard. And that was our first experience camping. Uh, and he really liked it. Um, and he, we, we went with another family who has two boys. And they had a great time. Yeah. And so when I'm looking at, like, how much does he enjoy it? Can he be responsible around a little campfire? You know, like, is he is he you know, playing in the fire or is he actually using it to toast the marshmallows? Like those are the types of things that I'm like paying attention to. Can you follow directions? And so far so good. Uh, and we'll try to work our way up to doing an actual camping trip that's not in someone's backyard, hopefully this this summer. Uh, and we'll see how far we can take it. And we'll also listen to him and make sure that it's something that he wants to do. And I will say one thing about, you know, my son in particular, you know, if you ask him, do you, like, does he want to go outside? Nine times out of 10, I'll tell you no. And then if I make him go outside, he has a fantastic time. So right. I think a little bit of this is just like, you know, you gotta, you gotta push them to do enough to actually see if they're gonna enjoy stuff. Right. Um, and I think also change as they get older too, in terms of like what they're interested in and, you know, how much do they really wanna do certain activities or, and not do other things too. So I'm, I'm looking forward to just seeing, you know, what he likes to do and who he becomes. Yeah, it's a finesse, you know, getting the nudge isn't a shove, right? It's it's that kind of a finesse. Sometimes it's just a shove. Get outside. You're not watching TV. <laughs> when you're trying to teach something, there's a finesse, or you're trying to instill something. You know, I so through fathering together, um, I have a chapter that meets monthly uh, up the road, and you know, some days there's four of us there, some days there's thirteen of us sitting in a circle. And it's an opportunity for us to sit and kind of chat like this, um, bring a topic in, you know, and get you know. You know, a lot of these guys I've sat down, have beers with, had picnics with, you know, you have, you have your chats, but sometimes with a group of guys, it doesn't always go that deep. So this is a time to kind of, you know, frame something, chat, and I always have a good time. Um, I'm sometimes nervous going in, like, I'm about, about to try to wrangle about 10 dudes into talking about something serious, but it always works out. It always works out for the better. But in the beginning, I was asking people what they're interested in. And even in Colorado, that has a lot of per perception around, you know, people going outside. You know, I mentioned, hey, I'd like to get a group of dads to go camping with their kids. And about half those dads were like, oh, man, I just don't, you know, I don't feel equipped to do that. I would love to have somebody who can guide me. And it was at that moment that I realized, like, that's a desire people have, but mm -hmm. not necessarily a skill set. And that's a wonderful thing. Right, Nate, like, you know, if you live closer, if I ever go out the East Coast, yeah, let's do it. And I know, you know, for me, who, who does have a lot of experience camping and um, maybe just a composure with adversity. That's you know, something I've tried to instill in myself through my adulthood is all right, how, how can I make myself uncomfortable and then get out of it? Um, and so, you know, what I see with a lot of young camping families is uh, if the mosquitoes are bad or the weather's bad. I mean, that can, that's hard. It can be really hard even in the, in, if you've done it a thousand times, but having somebody there who can at least just like Man, how do I, what is this string for on the tent? You know, if you haven't done it, um, somebody there can just kind of walk over and show you. It makes it, it makes a huge difference. And so finding yeah. that, finding that companion family who kind of knows they're taking you under your wing. And then as the, 
if you're the if you're the family who hadn't camped that much it's like i'm here to learn something like this is new for me i've got a buddy here who's going to show me and i'm gonna i'm gonna be a willing participant in in learning here and that i think that's a good way to definitely to get going as opposed to you know putting your credit card down and buying the store and then going out without any clue that yeah that's a recipe for disaster <laughs> Yeah, and, you know, and I think you bring up a good point, too, about how important uh, friends and community are through through this process of parenting. Um, and it's hard. It's so hard to if, if you don't already have that that core group of friends who have kids of, you know, roughly the same age or. Or, you know, if you yeah it's just it, it can be it can be really challenging to find your your community um and and that support but um you know but i think i think uh groups like fathering together are are just so important for that because you know it's again it's it, it can be a challenge to find you know to to just find new friends in your neighborhood or you know through work or um you know or wherever else totally so i think uh as we kind of wind down i just want to do i want to end on that note of shout out i'm gonna have one last question for for everybody here but um you know just end on that and you know finding community is important in this it makes it a lot easier um fathering together is trying to do that through the fatherhood insider um if you get on there there's a lot of courses a lot of subgroups with specific interests. Um, if, you know, if your child's going through something, your family's going through something, there's probably somebody else on there that is as well. And so I encourage you to seek that out, but nothing beats a good in-person. So, you know, if you don't have a crew, if you don't have guys that you meet with regularly, you know, seek something out that already exists or, you know, the Fatherhood Insider also has uh, supports and um, a lot of information on starting your own group. You know what type of location how to get the word out how to maintain it you know every you know topics for monthly gatherings so if you're feeling the call there i highly encourage it and also you know as we lead into father's day got the uh, big donation um the 50k for father's day you know if you feel inclined to donate uh, to help support other dads like yourself who are you know trying to get a little support i encourage you to um, go on the website and donate for that campaign um, so I appreciate everyone for being on here. Um, the last question I have is a bit of a, maybe a superhero or, um, a bit of a, you know, a toolbox question. So if you were to encourage a dad to get one thing, um, to then, you know, be able to bring into the family to encourage that adventurous lifestyle, I feel like I might have an idea for some of you what that might be, but what one thing might you encourage uh, whether it's a physical item or mentality, you know, what, what should somebody bring in their toolbox when they're trying to become more or take their adventure level to the next, to the next stage? One thing, huh? <laughs> and for Steve, uh, I'm, you know, you got to start with the camping anatomy book. We didn't even mention yeah. that. Said in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And yeah, thanks for bringing it up. I, I I, I do think resources like that are, are, are critical and, um, and yeah, I mean, here, I'm I, crazy enough. I have a copy of it right here. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, again, my book camping anatomy, it's got 20, 20 lessons and 20 activities that, that you can do um and and your you know your kids can can definitely guide themselves through the book pretty well and you know and there's all kinds of uh activities like you know learning how to um you know how to navigate or you know how to how to pack a uh, a backpack or you know how to set up a tent um or even find you know find a campsite and things like that um, there's all kinds of fun stuff in there that you can do in the, in your backyard, uh, as well as out, you know, out in, in the outdoors. So that, that certainly would be one. Um, and, you know, I, to, to some extent too, I think, um, giving your kids, uh, a, a small backpack 
is a good place to start, you know, um, because then you can give them some ownership over their, their experience just simply by giving them a backpack and then, uh, and then giving them some ideas for things to put in their pack, like a water bottle and some snacks and, um, you know, games or, you know, a magnifying glass or, you know, whatever, whatever those basic tools are. But I, I think if you start with a pack, then it's like, you know, your, your kids kind of feel like they're, they're ready to, to get outside, and, you know, and do some exploring. Yeah, that's a great one. Nate, I hope I love you can tell. I, 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 you know, I, I stepped away for a second. I had to go grab my favorite new thing <laughs> to put in that backpack uh, <laughs> that, that they just mentioned. This right here, it's called a bug catcher. It's awesome. Ooh, nice. And it has a little magnifier on the top, but you just put those on top of the bug and close the little door behind underneath it. Oh. And it's like eight bucks or something off Amazon. Oh, I love it. And I'm pretty sure they can get a ship it to you within two days. Um, and it has revolutionized our bug catching and outdoor exploring <laughs> because um, we can catch anything with that thing. And I didn't have this when I was a kid. I used to use a good old fashioned cup with a piece of cardboard to put on top, but that thing has revolutionized it. So I would say, there are lots of little things like that if you just like search for little little tools or toys for kids. And kids love gadgets like that. Um, I also am a strong believer in like books. Like we have like insect books and I have the ones from when I was a little kid and kids love to like go and see, like go, it I use this to teach my son how to like use a reference book actually. Yeah. And so he's like looking at pictures and seeing what he sees in real life and identifying it in the book. And that just sparks all types of like thoughts and creativity. And this stuff doesn't have to be expensive. Um, and I would also say, I like to pair all that stuff with YouTube. The kids, in, the kids who are growing up this, in this generation, they love to be online and they are online, however you do it. And there's lots of interesting stuff people are like learning and teaching on YouTube. And I, I do believe in screening this stuff before you just let your kid go wild on the internet. But like, that's another way to like, like further dig into like what sparks their interest and curiosity. And then you can use that as a way to like get them outside to go and see them in real life. We do this, you can do that all the time. And it's a great, like, for me, it's been a great recipe of like letting him learn and about whatever he's interested in. And then we, we go and find ways to go and see that and do that and play with that and see that and observe that. And so I, I think there are some good, good little gadgets that you can get and then some books because you gotta, you gotta teach kids how to, how to, how to learn. And you marry that with the 21st century and the technology and stuff that people are like content creating out there. And you got a pretty potent uh, formula for teaching kids and getting kids excited about the world. Yeah, I like that. Love I it. really appreciate that. The tangible, the, the, the mental, and then the, the, you know, the using the resources, mer merging that together. I think that's huge for so many, you know, it's either no TV or, you know, one, it's so, you know, to actually blend it all together is, is beautiful. And um, I've got 20 instructors in the field right now, groups of 12 kids, and you better believe I'm about to get one of them, each one of those. Get the bug catcher, bug man. Yeah. Get the bug catcher, man. It's awesome. so clutch. It's so clutch. <laughs> How about you, Scott, with the, the, the oldest of us? What was, what's something that everybody needs in their backpack? Yeah, I, I would say outside of stuff. I, I think it's the gamification of the adventure. So we could get the kids outside, you know, we would, we would create little games where I'd bury coins or toys, or we'd go look for geodes or, or fossils. And even as I've watched them get older now, it's Frisbee golf, which is largely mm. played in wooded areas. So, so gamification and creativity, because it then fostered them to, to get a little bit more into creative play and, you know, so it expands the mind. So the outdoors is a great venue for, just a lot of, uh, of that self-exploration and, and evolution. So wonderful. Be my advice. Thank you. Well, a big thanks to Steve, Nate, and Scott for coming out and for the fathering together folks and for all those working dads out there who care enough to, to sit down and have a conversation and you know, bring, this, bring this out and uh, work on being the best dads we can be. We're here to support you. I appreciate that. All right. We'll have a good one and uh, we'll see you next time.